three times Della counted it. One dollar and 87 cents. And the next day would be Christmas. Take a look at the home. A furnished flat at eight dollars per week. In the vestibule below was a letter box into which no letter would go and an electric button from which no mortal finger could coax a ring with a card bearing the name Mr. James Dillingham Young. Tomorrow would be Christmas Day and she had only a dollar and eighty-seven cents with which to buy Jim a present. She had been saving every penny she could for months with this result. Twenty dollars a week doesn't go far. Only a dollar and eighty-seven cents to buy a present for Jim. Her Jim. Many a happy hour she had spent planning for something nice for him. Something fine and rare and sterling. Something just a little bit near to being worthy of the honor of being owned by Jim. Rapidly she pulled down her hair and let it fall to its full length. Now there were two possessions of the James Dillingham Youngs in which they both took a mighty pride. One was Jim's gold watch that had been his father's and his grandfather's. The other was Della's hair. So now Della's beautiful hair fell about her, rippling and shining like a cascade of brown waters. It reached below her knee and made itself almost a garment for her. And then she did it up again nervously and quickly. On went her old brown jacket, on went her old brown hat. With a whirl of skirts and with a brilliant sparkle still in her eyes, she fluttered out the door and down the stairs to the street. Where she stopped, the sign read, Madame Sofroni, hair goods of all kinds. One flight up, Della ran and collected herself, panting. Madame, large, too white, chilly, hardly looked the Sofroni. Will you buy my hair? I buy hair, said Madame. Take your hat off and let's have a sight at the looks of it. Down rippled the brown cascade. Mm, Twenty dollars. Madame lifted the mass with a practiced hand. <laughs> Give it to me quick. Oh, and the next two hours tripped by on rosy wings. She was ransacking the stores for Jim's present. She found it at last. It surely had been made for Jim and no one else. There was no other like it in any of the stores. She had turned all of them inside out. It was a platinum fob chain, simple and chaste in design. As soon as she saw it, she knew that it must be Jim's. It was like him, quietness and value. The description applied to both. Twenty-one dollars they took from her for it, and she hurried home with the 87 cents. When Della reached home, she got out her curling irons and lighted the gas and went to work repairing the ravages made by generosity added to love. Within forty minutes, her head was covered with tiny, close-lying curls that made her look wonderfully like a truant schoolboy. If Jim doesn't kill me, she said to herself, before he takes a second look at me, he'll say, I look like a Coney Island chorus girl. But what could I do? Oh! What could I do with a dollar and eighty-seven cents? Della doubled the fob chain in her hand and sat on the corner of the table near the door that he had always entered. Then she heard his step on the stair way down on the first flight, and she turned white for just a moment. Please, God, make him think I am still pretty. Jim stepped inside the door, as immovable as a setter at the scent of quail. His eyes were fixed upon Della, and there was an expression in them that she could not read, and it terrified her. Jim, darling, don't look at me that way. I had my hair cut off and sold because I couldn't have lived through Christmas without giving you a present. It'll grow out again. You won't mind, will you? Say Merry Christmas, Jim, and let's be happy. You don't know what beautiful, nice gift I've got for you. You say your hair is gone, Jim said with an air almost of idiocy. <laughs> 